Hello everyone. My name is Abdi Gusti Pancasura Wibowo. I'm from Universitas Erlangga and I'm also a part of Edsa Film 2021. In this podcast, I want to review a movie called Impedicore. And this movie is also one of my favorite Indonesian movie. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. So, the movie that we call Impedicore here, originally Perempuan Tanah Jahanam, released on October 17, 2019. This movie was written and directed by Joko Anwar with the genre of horror, thriller, and mystery, this movie has represented Indonesia at the Academy Awards and has won several awards from Piala Citra, such as Best Feature Film, Best Director, Best Cinematography, etc. And then from Festival Film Bandung for Best Female Supporting Actor in Cinema Film, Indonesian Movie Actor Award for Best Supporting Actress and Piala Maya for Selected Artistic Layout. This movie is also started with talented stars such as Tara Basro, if you know Pengabdi Setan, and then Asmar Abigail, she's from Pengabdi Setan too, then Ario Bayu, Marisa Anita, and Christine Hakim. Within 1 hour and 46 minutes, this movie focuses its setting on a secluded and mysterious village called Desa Harjosari. This movie tells about Maya, played by Tara Basro, and her friend Stini, played by Marisa Anita, who went to the village to find the origin of Maya's family, after the terror incident she experienced while she was working. As it turns out, the village is filled with mystical powers, sadistic people, and a dark past, and Maya have to try to get out their life. The plot is chronological, but there is a scene where Maya gets a vision of the past, how the curse and the terror begin, but this doesn't make this film a reverse chronological. The dialogue. Most of the dialogues used are in Bahasa Indonesia, but there are some dialogues used by the villagers, especially Nyimisni, played by Christine Hakim, using Japanese. This represents the location and culture of the village in around East or Central Java, where the people are still very traditional and still use the local language. The performance is brilliant. Tara Basro managed to play an innocent woman who had to struggle to survive from being chased by a bunch of villagers who wants to kill her. And then also Christian Hakim, a psycho woman. She is a psychopathic woman who wields mystery, yes, but deadly black magic. Wow, that is arresting. The arrangement of costumes and places are made according to the conditions of a secluded village. The silence and eerie makes anyone who watches get carried away and can't stop looking back. All the horror, this movie emphasized the sadistic side more than ghost, so the ghost here is a parallel. And talking about camera movement, the interesting one is when the over-the-shoulder to shot camera movements, where Maya and Kisapdadi, played by Ario Bayu, were talking. Maya tries to find the missing Dini, and Kisapdadi, who pretends to be innocent, invites Maya into his house as if he wants to kill her too. That's scary. And not so many special effects in this movie. Only a few fox scenes of the ghost of child. And it's a bit unfortunate that during the opening credits, it's kind of boring. Because Joko Anwar only included the ranks of the people involved in the film. Even though the idea he used was brilliant. 
by using a shadowing effect of YM, which is also a trademark of his film. And without any illustrations, makes people who watch it a little annoyed. And talking about the narrative theory made by Edgar Grimmers, this made the concept of three spheres of opposed emerge this movie. So we're talking about the subject first. So what is subject? Subject is the actor who entered into an agreement with the sender and considered that it was their duty to obtain the object. The subject here is Maya. She has the intention to get the object, which is go to her Chesari and look up for her past. It can be seen from the dialogue. Kayaknya gue mau pergi seminggu deh. Kadang-kadang kejadian kemarin, gue jadi ngobrak-ngobrak barang bibi gue. Terus nemu foto ini, kayaknya orang tua gue. And then the second is subject. So, object is what senders want and something they don't have, but also the subject wants to reach it. The object here is my itself. And Bimo and the villagers of Harchosari is looking up for Maya because they think Maya brought the curse to the village. But Maya also wants to know her past. So basically, she wants to know who she was and maybe could bring her luck. It can be seen from a dialogue. Coba perhatiin rumah yang gede banget. Solusi permasalahan kita rumah keluarga gue. The third is Sander. Sander is where the actor moves the story, so that's the narrative structure could create. The Sander here is Bimo, played by Tengku Rif Mowikana. He has a small role here, but can move the whole story. So every night he is always stalk Maya when she's working at the toll road, until one day he's trying to talk to Maya. Nama Mbak Rahayu bukan. Mbak dari desa Harjosari Manda, Mandiraja bukan. Nama bapaknya Mbak Kidono Wongso. After Maya refused everything that has been told by Bimo, he wants to kill her with machete and said, Kami cuma tidak mau apa yang keluarga kamu tinggalkan di kampung kami. Tolong musnahkan. Because of that, Maya became curious and she began to get information about her past. Fourth is the receiver. The receiver here is, is the villagers. So the receiver itself is the actor who gets the object. All babies born in Hachosari are always born without skin. They assume that all these problems are caused by Rahayu, who is Maya's real identity. They believe that by killing Maya and using her skin to become Wayang, the curse will end. First, they killed Dini wrongly because she claimed to be Rahayu, until finally they realized that they had the wrong person and flocked to look for Maya around the village. Until the climax, Maya was caught and was about to be killed. Fifth is Helper. The actor who's helped the subject carry out her duties. The helper here is Dini and Rati. So Dini is Maya's best friend who is always there for Maya wherever she goes. She even wants to accompany Maya to go to Hachisari by she's own willing. Eh Mai, lo tuh sahabat gue, gak bakal lah gue ngirim. I'm sorry, gak bakal lah gue ngebiarin lo keling sana sini sendirian. And then Rati, she is the villagers on Rajasari, which is also Bimo's wife. She believed that killing Maya would not break the curse. She's not even angry knowing her husband died when he tried to kill Maya. Rati is a different woman in the village. She has the softest heart and tries to help Maya to hide from the villagers. In fact, he helped Maya. she helped Maya to bury the wayang kulit belonging to the ghost of a child so that the curse would soon disappear. It can be seen from dialogue. Mbah saya bilang, 
kalau orang bikin perjanjian dengan setan dan muncul kutukan, kutukannya nggak akan hilang, akan cuma muncul kutukan baru. Makanya aku nggak percaya kalau bunuh kamu itu akan ngilangin kutukan tersebut. The last is the opponent, an action that hinders the subject's task of obtaining the object. The opponent here is me, is me. Mai has found her true identity and has succeeded in carrying out the orders she got from the ghost to break the curse. But Nini's me still doesn't believe it and influences the village to keep bringing Maya to be executed. Kamu adalah kesalahan yang harus aku hapus. She felt hurt because she was raped by Kitono Wongso's father when she was working as a maid there. Then his son, Kisaptati, was born. Kisaptati also had an affair with Nyai Sinta who at the time was still the wife of Kidon Wangso. Finally, Nyai Sinta became pregnant and Yinismi was hurt by it. So she practiced black magic so that Rahayu, who incidentally is her own granddaughter, would be born without skin. All the curses in the village were started by her. Until Maya told Kisaptati that she was her biological child. Feeling ashamed and betrayed by his mother, Kisaptati slit his throat followed by his mother. Unfortunately, this film cannot be enjoyed by all age because it has an R, a restrictive rating. This is because the sadistic scenes and some scenes contain phonographic elements. This film has many values that are full of culture in Indonesia and is even still being practiced today. This movie is worth watch. If I could say, this is one of the best Indonesian horror movies that ever made. And thank you for hearing my podcast. See you again.